Hello, how are you? Hello, teacher. Hello, Gladys. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. So let's go ahead and get started and get to know a little bit about you. Gladys, tell me a little bit about yourself. Of course. Um, well, I, I'm Gladys Imelda Sanchez. I'm um, 36 years old and I live in Santiago, Texas, Quangos. Um, well, I... I'm studying English because I, I I like this language, and also because I want to apply to a job. And actually, I I apply to a job, but they told me that that I should to improve my grammar tenses because that is my Everest. You know. And what kind of job do you want to apply to, Gladys? Yeah, well, yeah, for a call center. Okay. Because um, I can uh, uh, work uh, from home, and because I I I I can go out for now. Okay, all right. I'm carrying my mom. Okay, yeah, well, it's a good idea. If you can work from home and take care of your mom, it's good. Yeah. All right. That's all. All right, thank you, Gladys. All right, Claudia, tell me about yourself. Good evening, teacher. Um, my name is Claudia Iraeta. I am 40 years old. I am a lawyer. The reason that I study English is because um, I get opportunity the jobs. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> okay. All right, Cla Claudia. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Jenny, what about you? Tell me a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> uh, good evening. I am Jenny Sanchez. I am 43 years old. I want to learn English because it's an important part of my job. And I want to, in the future, apply to other, other jobs. What is your job? I am a systems engineer. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Jenny. Appreciate it. Rosa? Hello, teacher. Uh, good evening. Uh, I live in uh, San Salvador. I am 23 years old. I study English because I work in the call center because um because as um a student <laughs> um um licenciatura in idioma that's me okay so rosa in in this moment you work in a call center or you want to work in a call center um and then in, in this moment, um, I don't I don't know work, mm -hmm. but, um, but if you can work in in call center. Okay, okay. Thank you, Rosa. All right, Luis. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Hi. Uh, hello. My name is Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. I'm 52 years old. <clears throat> I'm in industrial engineering. Uh, actually, 
I don't work. Uh, I study English and I hope uh, learn more about this course. Okay, thank you, Fer. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Jose Luis, tell me a little bit about yourself. Good evening. My name is Jose Luis Hernandez. I am a student student of the university. I work uh, in a cyber coffee. I am seller. And I need to study English because uh, I have to study uh, the, no sé cómo se dice, <laughs> ingeniería en sistemas. Okay. System engineering. Okay, that. <laughs> How do you say it? Jose Luis, you are studying? Yes, I'm studying. What? What are you studying, Jose Luis? Why? What? Or what? Huh. what? I'm studying. Uh, como era. Well, he said that. Uh, engineering system, system engineering. System engineering, exactly. There you go. Write it down so you don't forget. Very good. Excellent. All right. I don't forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ah, don't forget it. Like five seconds, you forgot. <laughs> Sandra. Hi, nice to see you again. Um, in my case, I study civil engineer. Um, uh, in my case, I, I work in um, laboratory. Um, and only that, I, I don't know what, what can I say? Mm. It's a little difficult to hear you, Sandra. You have a lot of TV noise around you and a lot of different things. Um, try again. Um, hi, my name is Sandra Cecilia Mugia. I uh, study civil engineer. Uh, and now I uh, uh, I work in a laboratory and only that I think. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Let's take a look, Gabriela. Hello, good evening. My name is Gabriela. Um, now I done a study only English and I work in part-time in a family work, family work or oh, business, family business, only that. And what is the business, Gabby? It's a business that the, um, the gas, in the um like a, a franchise a franchise yes mm -hmm. for for food for mechanics for electronics what what kind of business gabby a uh, franchise of a uh, gas okay so gas okay thank you Hello. Hi, Kathy. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, uh, yes, Kathy. Go ahead. Tell us about okay. yourself. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Kathy. I'm 23 years old. 
Uh, currently, I am studying at the university and I'm working too. And I start in English too. And I like go out the, the weekends. And that's it. <laughs> nice to meet you. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Nice to meet you. All right. Walter. Hello. Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Walter. I, I am a accountant. And I, I work in the accountant. Account. Only. Okay. All right. Thank you, Walter. Appreciate it. All right. Paola? Hi, good evening. My name is Paola Alvarado. I am 25 years old. I am a food engineer and I work as a quality supervisor and I only study English. Okay. Thank you, Paola. Appreciate it. Carlos? We believe I listen my, I listened my name, maybe? Maybe, Carlos. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Carlos. Um, uh, two years ago, um, I had a, a degree in computer science. Uh, I like uh, many uh, English. Uh, I, I know some words in English, uh, but uh, I need to improve. Uh, listening a skill, listening and and speaking a skill. Uh, I can read, I can read a little bit. Uh, I wait for. I learn many many skills and and speaking with everyone. And just right now. I, I don't work. I I'm looking for I looking for a job. All right. But, Thank you, Carlos. You what? Astri. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Astri. Uh, I am twenty five years old. I have a bachelor's degree in international affairs and I work in Salvadorian Red Cross. Okay. Thank you, Astrid. Josue? Okay, Josue? No problem. We tried to get that fixed for the next class. Um, what about your camera, Josue? Is your camera working? Okay, so Carlos, Astrid, Josue, is your camera working? This computer doesn't have camera. Okay, no problem, Astrid, thank you. All right, and I think only, I can in, only hear, all right, Josue. Maybe no, no camera on Josue's side as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, my name is Edwin, and I'm going to be your uh, teacher this course. And we're going to be in pre-advanced module three. So this is pre-advanced module three, which means that you are just about ready for advanced. One of the things that I'm looking for in order to help you to get to advanced is making sure you have the right pronunciation, the correct fluency. 
This is very important. In order to improve your fluency, you need to practice speaking more. You need to make sure that you uh, imitate. Uh, if you hear someone that you like on English uh, from any country or TV stations or anything like that, the important is to try to imitate them. That's the best way to get your fluency. Um, I have been teaching since 2002. In 2002, I started to work as a teacher here in El Salvador, and I started to get a degree and learn a little bit about it. I have worked in many different companies, um, including with Insafor, with USAID, with NGOs, um, with different institutions and private, private schools, as well as universities. My objective is to make sure that I, you help um, you improve your English, you improve your pronunciation. And to do that, I'm going to be able to tell you, I'm going to give you some corrections. Sometimes when you make a little bit of mistake, I'll let you know how to improve it. Okay. Is that good with everybody? Great. Yes. Before right, we... teacher. Hey, nice. Great. And before we begin, um, okay, I see we have um, a little Areli who, who just came in as well. Before we begin, does anybody have any questions or anything you'd like to know? No. Okay. For now, no teacher. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then let's go through the first day, all of the activities, so that way we can get started. Okay. So, as I mentioned, this is pre advanced. So, we have five sections. We have sections one through five. Um, sections one, two, and three, we're gonna complete between this week and next week, Thursday. We have eight classes to complete the three sections. And then we have two weeks to complete the following two sections. After section three, we have a midterm exam. That midterm exam is units one, two, and three. And then at the end, we have a final exam. That final exam is units one, two, three, four, and five. In order to pass the module, you need to have an 80 or more. Here, where it says Progreso, you can click on it, and there you're going to be able to see all of the activities and your grades. There you can see each activity for each section and the grade that you have for each one, including the exams. The important is that all of these are, must be completed in order for you to get the next level or get your certificate. How do you know which are the activities that you need to do? It's super easy. When you click on them, the ones that have a little check, like a little notebook, these are the activities that are graded. So here you can see we have four activities that are graded and the other activities are only to help us. Okay. Is that okay for everyone? Okay. Excellent. All right, guys. So let's make sure that okay, everybody, stay, everybody stay in focus. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Yancy, what is the minimum grade to pass? Or Yari, Jenny, Jenny, when is the minimum grade to pass? I'm sorry, please repeat me the question. Okay, thank you, Jenny. What is the minimum grade to pass? Uh, 80, 80%. 80%, great. And Jose Luis, when are we going to have the first exam? The midterm? Yes. Uh, the second week, uh, at the end of the second week. Okay. When, what day is the end of the second week, Jose Luis? I think um, in Thursday of the second week. Thank you. And Paola, how many units are we going to complete in the first two weeks? Repeat, please. How many units are we going to complete in the first two weeks of class? Rosa, how many week? How many units are we going to complete in the first two weeks of class? Three. Three units, exactly. So we are clear. 
between today and next week, Thursday, you have to complete three units. That means eight classes that we're going to go pretty fast. If you have any questions, make sure to watch the videos or do more activities. Any questions? No. Okay. Then let me share the video with you, and then we can begin with our English class. This video is from Insafort. It only takes a few moments, and then we begin our English class. El Insaforp ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del Sistema de Formación Profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo, contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de Competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos, tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online, cursos online con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insaforp ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno, formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insaport trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional Insaport, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los centros de formación fijos donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de INSAFOR y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra las mujeres. Posteriormente, el Instafor desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. De esta forma, el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía 
para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. Insapor, formando en igualdad. I'm running the new Mac OS Ventura, but what's this? The old clutter, those unsorted apps. Okay, there we go, good to go. So, now that we are ready, before we continue and go on, any questions, any comments? No? All right, perfect. Okay. So, everybody do uh, me uh, yo, Yes? Actually, I, I, I won. I yeah, have like one. It. And uh, that's all that course are for free or, or have a cost? No, Gladys, all those courses are for free. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, great. So everybody do me a favor and show me three fingers. Okay. All right. I see we only got a couple people. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm, I love to see it. The idea is for me to see who is able to uh, pay attention and who's not paying attention, just looking at the screen. That way, when I see you and you're not doing anything, like the person is just there, but they don't show me the fingers, then I know they weren't paying attention. Right, Josue? Hey, you see? Exactly what I said. Uh-huh. Perfect. All right. Excellent, Josue. Excellent. All right. Cabal, lo que acabo de decir, el que pone los dedos así es el que no está poniendo atención. Excelente, Josue, por el ejemplo. All right, guys. So make sure you're paying attention, not distracted, not focused. Sí, sí, sí. De vos estoy hablando, Josue. Exacto. Uh-huh. Exactly. So make sure you pay attention and stay focused. Uh-huh. Walter, are we ready? There's another one. All right, Walter, let's go for it. So let's take a look and make sure. Let's see, today's introduction videos is the series one. We're about to begin a new course. We want you to keep on learning. So stay and watch the first intro video we have for you. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean, what about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't. All right, so let's start off. Tell me, where are they? Where are? Yes. In a forest? In a forest, okay, great. And Maybe. what are they doing? Mm -hmm. um, how do you say acampando, camping? <laughs> camping is correct. Yes, they're camping, excellent, okay. And what did the girl hear? What did the, she's going there, she's very excited. What did she hear? A woman with her child. She heard a woman with her child. Excellent, Sandra. And what were they talking, the woman and the child? What were they talking about? All right, go mm -hmm. ahead, everybody. Show me two fingers. Maybe... Uh, they was talking about that they are going to take a shower brushing on uh, his hair teeth okay maybe maybe they were going to talk about taking a shower okay all right let's take a look and see what they talk about pay attention take notes it's scary is it because scary stories freak me out don't be such a chicken molly come on ellen tell us the story well this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So what's so scary about that? 
I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that. Just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man... Okay. Tell me, what's happening so far in the story? The girl was talking about a couple and uh, it seemed they are falling in love, maybe, and they are working in a, in a farm. Then the farm uh, uh, got fire, fire like uh, incendio. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if she talked about if her or, or he died or both died. Mm. Did no. they die? Both was of them? She... One? One. Both. Was she? Okay. Who died, Gladys? The wife. The wife. The wife. Okay, good. Let's listen to what happens next. Man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor, dead bride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then, I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers and they're in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that, thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. Okay, so now tell me what happened in the second part.
Me teacher. Okay. <laughs> well, they they are talking about that he never accept that he wa his wife disappeared in death and then he was looking for her and and disappeared he okay. disappeared okay perfect and after he disappeared what do the people say Do the people say he died, he suicide, he shot himself? What do the people say? I can listen okay. that part because I lost my, my internet. Okay, yes. don't worry. Jenny, go ahead. He is only disappeared. Okay, okay, kind of. Good. He disappeared and they say that they see him walking in that place, sometimes with flowers. That's why they were scared when they saw the man with the flowers, that he was still in that area. Good. Now that we watched the video, we understand a little bit about it. Here, we're going to learn today. Luis Fernando, can you please read? Okay, in this class, uh, participants will listen to a conversation where time close are used in context. Okay, good. Pronunciation used. Used. Okay, good. Let's look and see our time clauses. So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. Okay, so right now, let's take a look back. First, any question, any words you don't know? No, all the words are okay? All the words are okay. Okay. Pendant. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? Okay, let's take a look at that idea. First, let's take a moment and discuss. In the conversation, the first part, what are they talking so about? So, what made you... How was that? They mature in in her in their their life. Okay, when they were immature, good. And Alan and Carol talk about two points. These are called turning points. 
points or moments in their life that changed them and made them become adults. Here, let me put it in there. So turning points. Okay, what were the turning points for Alan and Carol? When they have a work. Okay, for who? For Alan or for Carol? I guess Alan. Yes, correct. It was for Alan. When Alan got a job, it was a turning point. He became more mature. What about for Carol? No? I don't remember. Do we need to listen again? I don't remember. Okay. The others, do you, do you want to listen again? Yes, please. Yes, yes please. Okay. Let's listen again. Let's check. What made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine, made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months and then I lost interest in it. So, okay. So, what did Carol say? And graduated from high school. Okay. Yes, she was talking about a, a dog. A dog. And when she returned to the school, uh, the dog is waiting for her. And then he said, uh, I remember when I when I had my bicycle, yes? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, who had the bicycle, Paola? Paola. Who, Sandra? Alan. Alan, that's right. Alan had the bicycle. Right. So they had two turning points. One when he got a job and the other was when he got his first bicycle. Those two things changed his life. This is the idea for turning point. The same for the girl. Carol, her first turning point going to college. And the other one was getting a dog. In this moment, we're going to make groups. And with your partners, I want you to tell your partners what were turning points in your life. What were things that impacted you and changed the way that you look at things or the way that you act, similar to Alan and Carol? It's okay? Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes. Good. What is the turning point and why it's important? So, for example, um, a turning point in my life was when I had my first pet. It, because that means that I had to become more mature and I had to be more responsible in the house. This showed me how to take care of other people and other things. I had to feed it and bathe it. And if the dog didn't eat, it was my responsibility. Like this. So with your partner, what were the turning points for you?
Walter Powell, you okay? So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. You know, he was mine. Made me dog. But I remember when I got my f for me. For the first time, I used to polish the bicycle every day. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? All right, let's take a look. Jose Luis, tell me about Rosa. I can't listen uh, about Rosa. So, what, what happened with Rosa? She couldn't speak. I don't know. Rosa? Okay. So, all right. We'll put her there. All right. Let's take a look. So, Jose Luis, who did you speak with? Um, I, I, I write my turning point okay tell us uh one turning point was when i have my daughter i have a lot of responsibilities in my house 
And another was when I got a job for the third time. Uh, I don't know how, how to make my job. And it was a big problem when I do it by the first time. Okay, all right. Interesting, Jose Luis. Good. How old were you when you got your first job, Jose? Um, 10 years ago, I, I started to work uh, in Movistar, <laughs> a telephonic enterprise, like... Uh, uh, ¿Cómo se dice un agente administrativo? Ok. So, an administrative agent. Ok. I, a, administrative agent. Ok. Great. And Jose Luis, what are you studying at the university? I'm studying online in the oh. University of El Salvador yes. in the what? U.S. I'm studying <laughs> system engineering. Okay, there you go, you see? Excellent, Osolis, very nice. Thanks. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, um, Gladys, tell me, what did Josue tell you? Josue told us about the first job. Uh, the turning point was because uh, he, he was responsibility for the first time in his life for his own thing, things. Okay. That's okay. Okay. All right, Gladys. Thank you so much. Okay. Josue, what did Luis tell you? Jose's microphone is not, doesn't work. He can type in the chat, maybe. Um, Josue, your microphone doesn't work. No, but you have headphones. Disconnect the headphones. Okay, we wait for Jose. Don't worry. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, Luis Fernando, tell us. Yes, my turning point was uh, when the country uh, was in war. In the war, uh, the point is that in my first day class in the university I was walking to the to the place and then uh, we found two body deaths two dead bodies yeah only two uh -huh. dead bodies yes and why was that a turning point the, that was yes excuse me why Uh, because uh, that cause that was um, a big impression for me. And, and what I happened? remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Just and, and what happened with you? you became a doctor. Nothing. You you decided to help other people. How did it impact your life? Yeah, uh, but impact my life because at, at in that moment I didn't see any death body in my life. Only in that moment. Yes. Yes. 
So, so what happened, Luis? What happened next? How, how did it change your life? No, no, uh, doesn't change my life, but I remember that moment 30 years later. Yes. Uh huh. Ah, uh, okay. Only okay. that. Okay, no problem. So then maybe we are confused. A turning point is not a memory. A turning point is not a memory. A turning point is something that impacts your life and change your life. Having a baby, okay. getting the first job. So it's not a memory, but but thank you, Luis. Thank you for sharing. But that way we clear for the, the idea of, of turning point. Okay. Now we're going to go and we're going to see time clauses. In this case, the next part is our time clauses. Is 1.3. Here we have one more time. So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine, made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog. But I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? So. What are we using there? The words like when, until, about. Those are the words that we use to describe different times. So if you're looking at it and we're looking at 1.3 time clauses, it's simply just giving the sequence, the order. So for example, until, after that, before that, when, as soon as. Are all of those words okay? As soon as, what, what does it mean? Uh, as soon as is at the moment this happened, the other. So as soon as I got my Dewey, I went to Guatemala. Like immediately. Correct. Oh. Like immediately. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other words? Okay, so now we're gonna try a few more. Let's take a look. Astrid, tell me about Kathy or Jenny. Yeah, about Kathy. She talked about what, when she was she was young, and she goes with with her dad to the park. And she had a bike and she loved when she went to the park and, and, and ride her bike. Okay, great. Thank you, Astrid. Jenny, tell me about the others. I only, I, uh, 
Tari, Haiti. Uh, when she was a child, she she liked to uh, go out with her father to the to the park because uh, she go to the bicycle. She go to the bicycle. Uh, she liked to go for a bike, a bike ride with her her dad. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Very good. And that's the idea. So today, after listening to a couple of you speaking, I see that we need to focus in our past tense. Many of you are speaking, and I understand the idea, but the grammar is not correct. The grammar you are using the present. The idea is the past. So for tomorrow, I want you to prepare a presentation, 45 seconds, one turning point in your life, what happened with details. As an example, 45 seconds. A turning point in my life was when I had my first son. I, it was very impactful because I had to move out of my house and I had to become independent. I had never been responsible for somebody else's life, but in this moment, I learned how to become responsible. The hardest part about having a child was that I was very young and I didn't have anybody to support me or show me how to do it. Like that, 45 seconds, one thing that impacted your life. Remember, no one memory, one thing that changed your life, why? Okay, what happened? Who was there? And when did it go? It's okay? Uh, you said what happened and the other two points were? What happened? It, of course, include who was involved, you, other people, where did it happen? Okay. And why it changed your life. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Well, I'm glad that many of you were able to join to you today. Um, for some of you that had some technical problems, no cameras, no microphones, problems with the audios, try to fix them because it's necessary to interact with the other partners in order to have a good microphone and a good camera. It's okay if you don't have the camera, it's not good, but it's okay. But the important is you need to be able to speak with the other people. This is the most important, okay? All right, thank you so much for connecting. I see you tomorrow. Okay, teacher, thank you. Have a good night. Tomorrow. Night. Tomorrow.